Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Tuesday. Hope your week has started out well. Hope you had a great weekend if you are in the North American region and you had Labor Day, had yesterday off to rest and, and not to labor. Today, we've got one thing, no, two, maybe three things for you. Number one, this Saturday, we're starting our brand new series. Jill and I do a series called Two Anatomy Geeks. And this is a really fun thing that we do and really fun thing that our Two Anatomy Geeks community really enjoy is learning anatomy and much more importantly, how to apply this information, the application of this anatomy knowledge. Because it's great to know anatomy. Anatomy really helps give you that foundation. So anatomy along with some brief understanding of biomechanics and motor control, how the brain controls the myofascial system, helps you create a foundation. So that way when you hear people speak, including myself, you have a basis versus just saying, oh, I either agree with that or don't agree with it based upon how I feel. And you know what happens when you rely mostly on your emotions, you usually don't end up with great results because you're just going from an emotional standpoint versus an information and informed place, right? You're not using your information, your knowledge, your foundation of how something works to base your approach of. So what we want to do and what we've created is a series and a community of really wonderful people, like-minded individuals just like you, who are really trying to help make a difference in their clients' lives. And really, I should say, not even help trying to help, they are actually creating a difference. We love hearing from our community when they say, Dr. Rosa, Jill, we, I use the information you taught us and they had better wrist range of motion. They had decreased low back pain for the first time. We did that simple release technique, that simple breathing technique, that simple posture cue that you gave us, basically anatomy, and my client noticed the difference right away. And that's how you really get buy-in with your information and help clients create those powerful transformations that will help them feel better move better and successfully perform their activities of everyday life, sport, or occupation, if so be. So, in this brand new series, we've got the anatomy of fashion, and we've all heard about fashion, the importance of fashion. And we've also heard a lot of the misinformation about fashion. We've heard things like, oh yeah, you, you might have fashion release to uh, release scar tissue. Well, that's possible, but how do you know your client has scar tissue? Or adhesions, release adhesions. Well, how do you know your client has adhesions? When do you foam roll? How much do you foam roll? And has foam roll really shown to be a benefit to your client? So how do you incorporate foam rolling of the fascial tissue? Are you really stretching or releasing, releasing the tissue? One of the things that we're gonna share with you this coming Saturday and through this three-part series is that you're always impacting the nervous system. Whether you're working with fascia, whether you're working with muscles, whether you're stretching or strengthening or doing movement-based patterns, movement with your clients, you're impacting the client's nervous system. And what you wanna always be asking yourself as you go through your strategy, what impact am I having on my client's nervous system? Not is this exercise the best exercise for my client, that may be a question you ask down the line, but how is this approach impacting my client. Not three weeks from now, not three months from now, not three years from now, but right now. Because your nervous system, your client's nervous system will always tell them what impact you are having on their nervous system, as well as their myofascial system. The myofascial system, I just read something recently that the myofascial system, myofascial system is basically a communication of what your brain is actually saying. And I think that was from Dr. Andrew Still, the founder of the osteopath profession. So he said this well over 100 years ago, back in the late 1800s, I believe it was. Talking about the importance of the fascial system in communication to and from the nervous system. So we can look at our client's posture and their movement strategy basically as a result of what the nervous system has received and in turn is telling the client to do based upon the information it receives. Now, obviously, your client's nervous system is receiving faulty information because of 
of a faulty or should say suboptimal sensory input, then it's gonna put out a faulty or suboptimal motor response. I mean, like how your nervous system tells the muscles in my fascial system, system what to do. So when we're working with our clients, you and I, we wanna be giving our clients not only exercises to do, but we also want to improve their interoception or their perception of how things are in their body, their awareness of how they are functioning inside the body, because that will also improve the sensory input into the central nervous system and then ultimately impact the output. So one of the things that we can do, obviously, is mild fascial release. That is a big part of our approach, the integrated movement system approach to working with our clients. However, it's only one part. It's not the process. It's a part of the process. So you want to you think about this like, you know, if, if you need a new fan belt, I don't know, I don't know much about cars, so I'm speaking. <laughs> if you have a fan belt in your car, you know that a fan belt has to work to turn the fan, I guess, right? So that's like saying, oh, the fan belt is the most important part of the car. No, it's a piece of the car engine that helps the engine run in optimal Man, or a spark plug. It's not what makes the engine run by itself. It's a piece of what makes it run. It provides the electric, electricity to help power the car, I think, but whatever, you, you, you get the idea. So when you look at myofascial release, it isn't what you do to change your client's life, it's what you do as part of their process. Now, let's turn it to our older clients with increased thoracic kyphosis. Now, we know that kyphotic curve is a relative neutral curve of a thoracic spine. What we don't want to see is when the client has collapsed down and or moved their thorax behind their pelvis. One of the things that will not work, because believe me, I've tried it for years and years and years and years, I've been doing this for 23 years, I've tried to have clients just stand up straight, I've tried to do lots of extension type exercises, it doesn't work. Because your client's stuck in this position, some of their fascia in places of the body are compressed down. Some of it is over lengthened. You're not going to just simply say, oh, stand up straight and have a client all of a sudden be able to elongate out of that posture. So you want to give them a strategy using myofascial release as part of that strategy to help them lengthen versus stretch. We use the word lengthen because we want to think about lengthening tissue versus just stretching. Because a lot of our clients will just stretch, especially our older clients, oh, I got to stretch, so I'll just do some of these stretches. And all they do is they keep stretching where they're already over lengthened. So what we want to teach our clients is how to lengthen where they need it and how to shorten where they need that as well. So last week I showed you the volume wasn't so great, so I, just, I want to repeat it. A very simple strategy we use with our clients is we use our Rolgo, one of our favorite myofascial release tools. Our friends Rusty and Dana connected us initially with the Rolgo and this is our go-to tool. We love this because of the contours. The nice thing about this roller is the spine will fit right in between. So this, this is zone one of the roller. This is zone two of the roller. The spine, spinous processes of the spine will fit right in here. So what we do with our clients is we find the apex of a curve. So wherever their curve is the most significant, we'll put the, the roller, the roller, roller in that place. And then we'll have a client focus on lengthening. What we don't have our clients do, especially our older clients, they don't get up down on the floor and roll all over this like, it, like it's a rolling pin. Again, be strategic. It's a tool. Use your tool appropriately. The reason why we don't get our clients down because most of our clients struggle getting down and let alone trying to get on top of this roller without causing further issues. And a, a lot of your older clients, especially your female clients, are osteoporotic. You don't want osteoporotic individuals or individuals with osteoporosis, let me be more clear than that, uh, individuals with osteoporosis rolling on this thing on the floor. Don't risk your clients like that. So an easy way to do it is to place this in the apex of the curve, so right about here on either side, they can go up against the wall. Again, they are not leaning like this where they roll off or fall off or slip off the wall. They just stand against the wall in a comfortable position, feet about shoulder width apart. Now, we have them put their hands on their abdomen so that they're breathing into their lower abdomen at the same time as they breathe, I should say, as they breathe out, 
they are thinking of lengthening. The foam roll is really just a kinesthetic cue for them to lengthen towards the ceiling. So we'll give it a cue. Think of your, the back of your head going long that direction. So breathe in, expand. So you're expanding laterally and inferiorly. It's not just belly breathing. It's lateral expansion, so side to side. It's also inferior breathing. We need them breathing down closer down to the pelvic floor. <laughs> closer down, lower down. Lower down in their abdomen, down towards the pelvic floor. So they can actually activate their pelvic floor appropriately. Then they breathe out, and as they breathe out, visualize going along through the back of their head, using that foam roll as that kinesthetic cue to lengthen, okay? So one more time, breathe in, down low, and out wide to the sides. They don't need more of this breathing out here. They need more lower breathing, they need more lateral breathing. Breathing in, always through the nose, in and out through the nose, and then breathe out and lengthen. Then you can move the foam roller up to the next area after three to four breaths, and then repeat. Again, stay around the apex of the curve because that will have the greatest impact on their, on the area where they actually need to shorten. So what we're really teaching the client to do is lengthen, I should say lengthen their fascia through the back of the neck and the upper thorax, shorten the fascia in the middle thorax where the foam roller actually is. So we're not really doing myofascial release where the foam roller is. That's just a kinesthetic cue that will help retrain the ability to stay long all around that place. So then just doing that, I can just feel like, yep, a little bit taller. I didn't do any stretching. I didn't do any mobilization. All I did was bring my mind's attention that interoception created better proprioception around that thoracic region for a lot of our clients, they're not even aware of where the backside of the rib cage is. They're not aware that they're not breathing into their sides or down towards the pelvic floor. They're changing the tone of their muscles, their abdominal wall. They're changing the tone. They're using their diaphragm in a more appropriate manner. They're regulating internal pressure, and now they're creating fascial length through the back of their neck and their upper thorax where they actually need it. So a very simple, easy strategy. There's no stress, there's no strain, there's no pushing, there's no pulling, there's not, no prodding. There's no like trying to jam your, your, your knee into their back to try to get them to ex extend. It's just using the proprioceptive system, the nervous system, and the nervous system in control of the myofascial system to create these powerful changes. And when you do that, your client, and you, if you use a range of motion like shoulder flexion, you can use rotation, you can use single leg stance, your client will almost always feel a difference. And most of the time they don't feel a difference, it's just because they need better awareness. And that's part of this process, is you're helping your client not only change their myofascial tension and length, you're also helping to improve awareness. And awareness is a big part of creating change in posture and ultimately movement and allowing your clients or helping your clients move towards a more optimal strategy so that they can safely and successfully do the things they need to, want to, and love to do. So I hope you enjoyed that session. I hope it made sense. This is what Jill and I share. So this week, we start session one of three. It's three modules. Generally, they're supposed to be about 60 minutes in length. We generally go 90, 120 minutes, just because we have so much fun. And people ask great questions, so there's lots of interaction during the live sessions. If you can't be online, you can always access the recordings. So it's three sessions anywhere from three to six hours, depending on how long and how many questions people have, we share with you the anatomy, we're gonna look at the anatomy of the different myofascial chains in the body. This week we're gonna start out looking at the basic function of fascia, the basic structure of fascia, the basic, look at the deep fascia, so the deep myofascial fascia, myofascial fascia <laughs> of the thoracic pelvic cylinder. We'll link that to breathing and how you can use breathing to change your deep fascia, start to create those changes. In, in module two, we'll go into the flexor and extensor chains. How do you create length, optimize the length and strength of the flexor and extensor chains? Finally, we'll finish up with the oblique chains in module three. How do you train effectively and safely to teach your clients how to use their rotation chains, the anterior and posterior oblique chains? so that they can walk better, so they have better balance, so they can do the things that they need to and want to, like golfing or tennis 
or those rotational type activities. So a great series coming up this Saturday, and then we have two more Saturdays after that. The link is in the bio. If you have any questions about True Anatomy Geeks, what the series is all about, go to the link, check it out. We look forward to seeing you this Saturday. If you can't be online, all sessions are recorded. And as a bonus, we have CECs, like most of the series has done, we apply for CECs. We have CECs, Continuing Education Credits, for all our other series as well. So you can check that out as well if you're interested in other areas of the body. And Jill and I, Dr. Evan Osar, look forward to seeing you this Saturday. If you're looking to learn more and have a lot of fun learning anatomy and be part of a really cool community. It's a really awesome community. If you're part of True Anatomy Geese, we love having you be part of that. Many of our, say all of our integrated movement specialists are part of that community. It's really a fun, supportive way to get your weekend started right. And like I said, if you can't be online, watch the recordings and you have access to the recordings for as long as we're around and we plan to be around for a long time. So, have a great day. Any questions, just reach out to helpdesk at fitnesseducationseminars.com or place them next to this video. This is Dr. Evan Osar. Look forward to seeing you at Tune Anatomy Geeks. Make it a great week. Get out there and empower your clients. Be that leader that brings people together. There's too many people out there dividing people. Be that leader that your clients need and your potential clients are seeking for to help give them a safe environment to learn, be empowered, and really discover the beauty and power of healthy living. Because we know that that boosts the immune system, we know it boosts mood, and we know it's a big part of nutrition, mindset, sleep, relationships, to overall health. So keep doing what you're doing, and if we can help you in any way, please reach out, let us know. Make it a great day.